Hallelujah. We want to give God a praise for his mercy. Today, glory to God. I want to welcome you to God's presence. As a matter of um, what's the state of my heart right now, just grateful to God for his mercy. And um, I need to let you understand that every word that proceeds from the mouth of God has capacity to come to pass. If it is God that said it, he can do it. If he can't do it, he won't say it. That's why we're not serving man. You know, if you're young, you would have been, you know, you, you don't even need to be whole to be disappointed by men. But when you walk with God, you will get to a state in your life that you know is the only thing reliable. Is the most reliable. Hallelujah. I was so grateful to him. So on this note, we want to welcome you to his influence church. We want to thank God for his mercy and his grace over our lives. This is a place where God has called us to build a multicultural church that enhances kingdom growth and maturity and ministry among saints in Medway, starting with Medway. Our ultimate goal is to get to a point in our journey with God that we, we, Medway will be a name that is known globally. Yeah, that's our dream, that's our goal, that's our desire. And uh, we want to believe strongly that God is raising an end-time army whereby it's got nothing to do with color, it's got nothing to do with accent, it's got nothing to do with um, ideology. We just have Jesus as the center cause of our gospel. And, uh, and we believe also in this influence show that every believer is a minister. Yeah, yeah, every believer is a minister. We believe in this influence church that um, when we come together like this, this is a school of the spirit. What we do between Monday and Saturday is the real deal of a believer. Yeah, praise God. So we, we just don't want to be here to just, oh, if I go to church on Sunday, I'm a believer. No, 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 no. In this influence church, you start a journey by coming to church. So what happens when you leave church? You have to practicalize what you've learned, you know, in God's presence. Praise God. And I pray that God is going to send this word to us today in Jesus' name. Let me draw your attention to two verses of the scripture as I prepare your heart for God's servant to come up today. Go with me to the book of um, Genesis 28. Genesis 28 from verse 13. Just one verse. Genesis 28, verse 13. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. Genesis 28, verse 13. The Bible says, and behold the Lord. Are you with me? And behold, the Lord too would above it. That's an encounter between God and Jacob. And said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and of God the Hazi, and the law, and the land wherein you, you lie to thee, I'm going to give unto your seed. I want to mark that word that when God was introducing himself to Jacob, he said, I am the God of Abraham, your father. In other words, Jacob, this encounter is not new. This is a continuous encounter. I have a touch with somebody before you, and it's on that premise I want to relate with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, let's go to Exodus chapter 1. Exodus. Chapter 3. Verse 6. Are you there? Exodus chapter 3, verse 6. Exodus chapter 3, verse 6. Bible says, moreover, he says, that's another encounter between God and Moses, right? He said, moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So there was another encounter between God again and Moses. And God has to relay with Moses on the premise of relationship he had with the fathers. Let me tell you, no matter the anointing you have, it's not new. There is no new anointing anywhere. I'm telling you. You call yourself apostolic, you call yourself archbishop, there is no anointing, there is no anywhere. Every dealing of God with this generation is built on what God did with the last. The, uh, last. That's why the Bible says, be followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Okay? Why did I, I just want to share something with you. That's why I just brought it this scripture. <laughs> As I pray your heart for, uh, for, for God's servant. 
when you understand that um, the God we serve is a God that works with men, not in a disjointed way, what God is doing today has a connection with what God started in Genesis, even if it is like 6,000 years ago. We might not be able to map it because our mentality is too limited. We don't even have the capacity to do the research. But you need to understand that God is continuous and revelation is continuous. God does not do a disjointed work with men. Are you with me? Does not. So when Jesus even came, you could see clearly that they have to quickly tell us his genealogy from the beginning to let you know that the coming of Jesus is not, even though he's, the, he's God among men, could not be disconnected with the flow from the beginning. You understand what I'm saying? The method might be different. Because to Jacob, now that we saw in Genesis 26, he was a blood son or grandson of Abraham. And God showed up and said, I'm the God of your grandfather, Abraham. But I'm still, I'm still dealing with you based on the relationship I have with your grandfather. But when it came to Moses, Moses is not even in lineage. Because Moses is from Levi. But as far as God is concerned, the method might be different. The auction is the same. And one of the things that this generation must understand is that we, we take batting to give battings. Might not be the same platform. What I'm telling you is Bible school, but just listen. <laughs> just listen. <laughs> we take platform. So what that suggests is that when you get to an environment, a society, you need to study the men God has used. That's how it works, to study the men God has used. So like five years ago, I was, is it five years now, around that time, I was in South Croydon, and God, six years, yeah? there are no figures. <laughs> I was in South Croydon, and I was praying because I knew there was a navigation in our journey. I prayed I wanted to return back to Nigeria. I've already started nursing it because I couldn't, I couldn't see the signs. I couldn't see the signs. I am, I am somebody that follows whatever God says. Even as I'm here right now, the reason I'm here is because God said a lot. But while I was trying to follow him, I couldn't see the sign, so I wanted to run away. Yeah, so he spoke to me and said, don't. So that Saturday evening, I was just praying, and I saw the map of Shatter. I've not been to Ken before. But then I saw it, I packed my load, and we moved away. And to be sincere, we've enjoyed God's presence in Medway more than anywhere we have lived, left, less in London anyway. Because when you live in an environment that is conducive with your spirit, this is another thing we need to learn as believers. You need to learn to understand how the environment, the atmosphere of the environment God places you. It must be conducive with the texture of your spirit. If it is not, it's a big problem. So after discovering destiny, the next thing is location. So when we came here, we started, I said, don't matter to do is to do the mapping of the environment. And apparently, I must tell you, as at that time, I didn't even know there's nothing that is going to call this influence. It wasn't, I didn't even think of planting any church in the in in kingdom. It's not part of it. But God has, the, has his right to interrupt. And when I was searching, I want to see what is the prophetic word that's over Medway, what is the, who are the men that God has used. And that's where I met as I found out about uh, Alan Smith. When I heard first about his name, I wanted to talk to him, so I sent a message. To, I called this church. Apparently, I handed over to somebody else, uh, you know, uh, Mark. Um, I, I called the church. He wanted to book an appointment, but I just had the restraint, and I didn't book the appointment for the next two years, only to discover when we wanted to start the civilian church, and we're looking for a place to stay for about three, six months before starting. We just decided that, okay, let's look for a purely white society to just see how they think, the culture, their way of worship, and all of that. And we ended up in the same ministry that it started over 40 years ago. <laughs> and, <laughs> so it was after we left that ministry, by happenstance, probably I called his house or something, and that's how uh, we started the relationship. I must tell you that he has given me time. Uh, at least last year, we met like three or four times on the coffee table, just talking and learning. And then one of the things that was from when I tell you guys that God still uses people in diaspora, 
Because some of you online <laughs> will be thinking that the United Kingdom is a place whereby God does not, there, there, is no, there is a place of wickedness. There is no people that fear God. You know, you are the one. Forget it. There are people that still serves God, that still follow God. I talked with him and I traced his journey for over 40 years. I think Alan is about 78 now. Still standing, still driving, still preaching. His voice is still clear. <laughs> And, and, and I, and I traced his journey for about 40 years, and I discovered that this is one of the men. Two reasons why I brought him here. Number one, he's a man that wants to be honored in Medway. The man that wants to be honored. And I just pray that we will not be a generation that despises our fathers. That no matter the anointing you carry, they say, I am a, I am, I am a Medway shika. You know, we're a Medway shika. If you don't honor the fathers that laid the foundation, Probably there are some meetings and conferences that were held in Medway historically. Probably you should be one of the partners, if not the only partners. I don't want to give you figures, but I can tell you that God has used him mightily from the scratch like this, and boom, like that. So he's the man that wants to be honored. And please, please, you know it. We do not disrespect fathers. We do not disrespect fathers. And number two, we believe definitely that he's coming today. It's going to be a blessing to us. I want, us to, I want him to pray for us, to encourage us. I want to serve Jesus. I don't know about you. I want to serve Jesus. I want to, I want to trust God. I want to trust God that there will be a measure of spiritual precision and accuracy among believers in this environment. We might not be there yet. We might not have been introduced to them yet. They might not have known us yet. But let's keep prepping, preparing, pulling the strength and stamina understanding and gazing at the throne of Father of God and being able to link it with what the fathers have done before us so that when the doors open, boom, we know that we are, we are continuing what God started. Let me say to you again, no matter the anointing, let the anointing be overwhelming you. It is not new. It is not new. It's just that you didn't know the last person God used. <laughs> it is not new. It is not new. <laughs> there is no gift or the spirit you want to put on the table that God has not used. You are not the first person. This new generation, we're the new breed. We're the one. It doesn't. Yeah, it's the God of our fathers. It's the God of our fathers. So we joy today. I want to please welcome. Um, for the first time, not the last time, <laughs> to his influence church, God's servant. Alan Smith. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Well, it's good to be here. I'm not going to give you a sermon this morning. I'm going to share my heart and share the Word of God. Problem is with sermons, people often prepare sermons and they don't fit into what God is wanted to say. Now, I see that we've got three children, and I'm glad we've got th one, two, three children here, because y you can sit down. I'm going to do something very strange this morning. I've never done this before, although I've done something like it. I want the children, if you would, I'm not going to call you out, so you don't have to worry, to put one hand out like this. Just one hand like this. Nothing's going to happen to you. Well, nothing bad anyway. Okay, and then I want you to understand this, and you'll understand it more a bit later on in the meeting, but God is going to put a £10 note into your hand. £10 into your hand. So what I want you to do is, is put it into your hands. Now I want you to grab it because you don't want to lose it. Okay, so you've got it in your hand right now. Okay, £10 note in your hand right at this moment. And what I want you to do is, while I'm speaking this morning, I want you to think about what you're going to spend that £10 note on. Now, you may look and say, nothing in there. Yes, there is. There's a £10 note there. What are you going to spend that £10 note on? And later on in the meeting, I'm going to come back to you and find out what you're going to spend your £10 note on. You may go and buy yourself some sweets, 
You get lots of sweets for £10. You might buy yourself a big ice cream. I don't know. You might buy yourself a toy. I don't know what you're going to do, but I want you to hold on to that £10 note. You can put it in your pocket, if you like, so that you know, you're not fiddling around holding the £10 note. The other thing I want to say is this. If you do not, by faith, see this room filled with people, it will not be filled with people. As I was sitting here this morning, God spoke to me and said, I want to fill this place. But he said, the way that I fill a place is to fill the hearts of the believers that are already here to believe what I want to do. Because we are a people of faith. Turn in your Bibles to Proverbs. I'm going to explain a little bit about myself uh, when I go to the Word of God. But I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to go two places this morning. You know, I came to the Medway Towns rather like uh, Pastor Ladipo did. And uh, I just got married. It was in 1966. I married a beautiful girl called Rosalind, and we needed a place to live. And we came to a place called Hempstead, which most of you probably know, because there's a big shopping center there now. But when we first came, there were only two shops, nothing else. And there were only 300 houses. And we walked around this place, and we looked in a hole. And in a hole was the place that they were going to build our house because there was a little development going on. And we had to stand there and decide whether we were going to buy the house that was just a hole. So we walked around the village and we walked past a house. It's the one that we live next door to now. And in the window, there was a Billy Graham sticker because Billy Graham was coming to England. And it was a confirmation to us that God wanted us in that place. Don't ask me why it was a confirmation. I don't know. It just confirmed it in my spirit that this was the place. And my wife felt the same. So we stood in the phone box that isn't there anymore because everybody has mobiles. And we stood in a phone box and we prayed, Lord, is this the place? And God said, yes, this is the place. And so we moved into Hempstead. And the first week we moved into Hempstead after we were married, that must have been seven days after the 20th of August, so it's 27th of August about, we, we went to church. And in the church, there were the same number of people as in this church this morning. And uh, we were welcomed in the church. In fact, they welcomed us so much, they had flowers at the front and they gave my wife the flowers. And so we took the flowers home and we joined that little church. A while later, they decided, and it was, it was just a rented building, they decided they were going to pull the building down. And so it looked like our little church was going to fold up. But we began to meet in the house next door to where I live now. And the church began to grow. My parents said to me, Alan, why don't you join a proper church and I thought well I haven't joined an improper church and this is where God has placed me and what started to happen was God started to add young people and we finished up with five adults and about 12 young people I wish I could tell you the whole story but I can't because there's no time to tell you that but those 12 young people got saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit six of them were kneeling around our bed. At the end of one of the meetings, just like we had this morning, somebody brought a message in tongues, there was an interpretation, we closed the meeting and the young people went to our home. When we went to look for them, they weren't there. And I said to a boy that was downstairs, where are they? And he just pointed up and I thought, oh, they've been raptured. <laughs> no, they couldn't have been raptured. He said, they're in your bedroom. And I said, why are they in my bedroom? He said, I don't know, but I want to commit my life to Jesus. So right there and then, we led him to Jesus. Then we went upstairs, and all around our bed were young people kneeling, praying. And we knew exactly what God wanted to do, because 
the folk in the church were not baptized in the spirit and we went round and we laid hands on every one of those young people and they all spoke in tongues and were baptized in the Holy Ghost. The church began to grow and eventually we started to meet at Hempstead Valley Shopping Center. It wasn't built when we first moved there but gradually God added to that. And so now since 19, well I don't know, it probably was about 1970, we started to grow the church and it got very big. There were periods of time when it got smaller because that happens in church life, doesn't it? Christians move around. It's a bit like, do you know what it says in Sweden, smorgasbord Christianity, where they go and they want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But the real committed people were, were there. And eventually I got to the age of 70 and the Lord said, I don't want you to lead the church anymore. I'd already had a traveling ministry and I was traveling all over the place, Africa, America, uh, Europe, Albania, all those kind of places. And the Lord said, I want you to lay down your ministry here. And it was ha ha handed over to Mark, who you mentioned a bit earlier. Unfortunately, they didn't want me to stay because uh, I think they saw me as a little bit of a threat because I've been there so long. And so <clears throat> I kind of had to leave. But that's okay because God has taken me to various places. And one of the last meetings, I was sitting at the front and God said this to me, I'm going to send you to places that don't have many people and that can't afford to invite somebody in. Now that works sometimes, it works, doesn't work other times. I go to big churches and whatever. But you know, during the period of time I was in the Medway, we established what we, I can't remember, celebration services. And we used to meet in Chatham Central. Anybody been in Chatham Central Hall? Well, it holds about 1,200 people. And we filled the place. Because we used to bring in various speakers from different places and it would be Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. And so the influence, it's a good name, the influence of the Spirit of God spread over Medway and pretty well in every church in Medway there were Spirit-filled believers. And in fact what God began to do was send Spirit-filled pastors and leaders. And so that's how it all began. That's in a nutshell. Let me tell you, in that time, I was a director of a travel agency in London. Now, now my brother, Aladipo, knows this because we've conversed about this. I was, and one day, God spoke to me very clearly and said, I want you to leave there. And I said, to do what? And he said, I want you to be pastor full time. I was already the pastor of the church, but I want you to be full time. And so what we began to do was to seek God. And as we sought God, the Lord began to show us various things. And one of the things he said to me was, I want you to learn to trust me. And we're going to come back to trust in a minute. See, in this verse it says here, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. If you trust in the Lord with half of your heart, then you're half-hearted and you're not really trusting in the Lord. So he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And so I started to save money. Now, I'd never been able to save money because I had, by that time, two children. we now got three, but I had two children and I was doing my best to pay the mortgage and all the other things. And so when he told me to trust him, he said this to me, I do not want you to take a salary from the church. Now, understand this, that doesn't work for every pastor. So if you know a pastor who's taking a salary, don't say to him, oh, you shouldn't take a salary because Alan Smith didn't take a salary. No, around that time, there were several of us that were living by faith. And God spoke to me, he said, I don't want you to take a salary. You are to go to places I send you. You are not to go for the money. You are not to tell people what your needs are. You are not to even suggest that. If someone asks you what your needs are, you tell them, God provides my needs. Now, that was quite a big thing to do for me. And please understand this. I'm not boasting in that. The only person I'm boasting in is God. 
Because when God speaks, we have to be obedient. And so as he spoke to me, it was very clear. And, and I don't know how he spoke to people in the Old Testament. I, I, they didn't have the word of God like we have. But he spoke to me so clearly, and I knew it was God. And I shared it with my wife, and eventually I saved up 500 pounds when I left my job. And so on the 4th of January, 2000, and, no, 1976, I finished my job and we started to continue to pastor, but with no income. In the first three months, all of our savings had gone. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I'll have to go back to work now. He said, no, 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 you won't have to go to work. What you'll have to do now is to trust me to provide your needs. But that was the way God dealt with me. He doesn't deal with people all the time like that. He dealt with us. And so having used up my 500 pounds, now he said, you will have to learn to trust me. And day after day, God provided our needs. And we learned to trust him. Now, I could be here for all day and tell you story after story of God's provision. He didn't provide so that I could store it up. He provided so that, A, I could give, but also so that we could live. So we needed to live, but we also needed to give. And so there was the situation. I'll come back to that story in a minute. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. You know, it's so easy, isn't it, to lean on your understanding. How is God going to fill this building? What's he going to do? I don't know how he'll do it, but I, in my spirit, see people sitting in these empty seats. And if you see people sitting in these empty seats, you can trust God to fill them. I see this church growing with more children than we have at the moment. Now, don't run home and make more babies. Believe God to begin to bring in young people and children into this ministry because the future of the church depends upon these young people that are growing in God. So he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, listen, in all. All your ways, not in some of your ways, in all of your ways, acknowledge him. What does that mean? It simply means bring him into the situation. I don't know what you do for a living. I pastor a church or did, and now I'm traveling. My wife and I have been going to Albania for 28, 32 years, something like that, and I've been going to other places. That's what God has asked me to do. And so I bring him in to every situation. I don't do something, and, and Brother Aladipo said this this morning, I don't do something unless God guides me and leads me. It's so easy to get into a pattern of making up our minds to do something and believing that God will follow us in what we do. But in fact, what God wants is for us to follow him into what we do. And so at the moment, although I'm 78, am I 78? No, I'm 79, I think. I'm 79. You know, at 79, like, you know, they put you out to grass, don't they? You know, who wants to listen to a 79-year-old? But I tell you this, I got a 20-year-old heart. Because that's how God renews our strength. So he says, bring me into every situation. So let me read that again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. Bring him into every situation. He will direct your path. And then it goes on to say this. Be not wise in your own eyes. You know, I'm an old Christian, and I meet lots of Christians who think they're very wise. And they're ready to tell people what to do and what have you. But, you know, their advice is not coming from the throne room of God. We need to be listening to what God is saying. Now, flip over into your Bibles, 
because we, I want to go now to this. This is really what I have to say this morning. That was just the introduction. I don't know how long we have, but Pastor Aladipo, if you do this five minutes before I'm due to finish, I know I've got five minutes because I want to pray for you all at the end. And there's nothing wrong with doing this. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll still be here for tea. Okay. <laughs> See, let me just say something about faith. I want to speak about faith this morning because faith sees the invisible. That's why I can see people in this room. They see the invisible. These guys and girl, the two boys and girl, they should be able to see the invisible. What's the invisible? The ten pound note I spoke to them about is invisible. But if by faith they can take hold of that and begin to plan what they're doing with it, okay, it's invisible, but faith sees the invisible. Faith believes the incredible. You know, who could believe that over the last few years God has filled this nation with people particularly from Africa, now, I've got to be careful what I say now because for years the Caribbean folk have been coming over and finding a place here. But in many places, what they've done is close themselves off from us white folks. You know, they've tended to be on their own. In fact, I was in a meeting a good while ago when I was chairman of churches together and someone stood up and said, I represent the black church in, in Medway. Well, let me tell you something. There isn't a black church. There isn't a white church. There isn't a yellow church. There's only a church. And we're all going to spend the same place in heaven. Isn't that going to be wonderful? I'm just hoping I'm going to have my villa <laughs> next to my brother, Aladipo, because we get on very well together. Let me tell you, Aladipo, shall I call, is it all right to call you Aladipo or Pastor Aladipo or what? Okay, Aladipo. And we were having coffee together and then we walked into Hempstead Valley and my wife was there. And I introduced him to my wife. And as we walked away, my wife said, he is such a lovely man. Now, she wasn't trying to fix her eyes on your husband, <laughs> but she said he was a lovely man. And he is. Our hearts have been knit together, so I want my villa on my mansion next to him. I know some of the Bible has changed the, 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 the mansion to in my father's house and many rooms. I don't want a room. I want a mansion and I want it next to a ladipo. So, so faith sees the invisible. Faith believes the incredible. But listen, it does the impossible. And you know, God is going to put up before you many things that would seem impossible. You know, years ago, my youngest daughter, when she ran, I think this is fairly normal for some girls, when she ran, her knees used to knock together like this. And we were having a meeting one night, we were talking about healing. You know, it's easy to talk about healing, but it's much more difficult to do it. And so as we were talking about healing, someone said, well, why don't you pray for your daughter? Because her knees knocked together. And she said, yes, Daddy, can you pray? And I said, yes, I'll pray, but later. I like to put it off because I didn't want anything to happen. And my Julie, she went up into her bedroom. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm just open to the Holy Spirit. Julie went up into her bedroom. The meeting finished, and about an hour later, she's still sitting on a bed. And I said, why aren't you in bed? She said, you said you pray for my legs. And I said, well, yes, but not necessarily now. But she said, well, will you pray for me now? And she's only a little girl, about six or seven. And so I began to pray for her legs. And I can remember holding on to her legs. And I didn't have an ounce of faith. I want you to notice that and keep that in your mind. Sometimes we don't have faith. Faith is a gift from God. It's not something that you can make up. It's not something you can pretend to have. And so she laid on the bed there, and I took her feet. And as I took her feet, her legs began to move. And her knees just stopped absolutely central. And she jumped up off of the bed and jumping up and down. I've got new knees. I've got new knees. I've got new knees. Now, God's man... 
of paste and flour. I know I'm supposed to be faith and power, but God's man of... Uh, I called down to my wife, Honey, can you come up? Has something happened? I saw it happen, but I still wasn't believing. And, you know, I saw a miracle of God taking place. And sometimes you can undervalue what God does because it's just a little miracle. But when you do little miracles, you can... No, I don't mean when we do it, but when God does little miracles, we then go forward to see bigger things in God. So faith is the substance, it says in my Bible, of things hoped for. These children, by faith, have got a £10 note in their hand. Now, they may not be in faith, and you may not be in faith, because you might think, well, how's he going to get a £10 note? How's God going to get a £10 note into the hands of these children? Well, let me tell you, in faith, there are three things that happen. God is the instigator of faith. We are the ones that follow his instigation. In other words, if, if God speaks to us, now we've got to find a, 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 a way forward to believe our God. But then he will often, not always, but he will often use someone else to provide the very thing that he's told us to believe for. Let me give you another illustration. Several years ago, our cat got run over in Hempstead Road. And it came and it ran behind the sh the, our shed. A and a lady knocked at the door. She said, I think I've just hit your cat. And so we went and we looked, and there was the poor cat behind the shed, and he was in a terrible way. We took him to the vet. Now, I was out full time. I was living by faith. I wasn't allowed to tell people my needs. So I never told anybody my need, but we took him to the vet. The next day... I phoned the vet and said, how is the cat? And he said, oh, his pelvis is broken. So I said, so you'll have to put him down. Oh, no, 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 no. We can mend him. And I said, well, how much will it cost to mend the cat? And he said, 60 pounds. I didn't have 60 pounds. And if I did have 60 pounds, I wasn't sure I would want to spend it looking after a cat. But as my girls heard me talking to the vet, they began to cry. And they cried and cried. And so we gathered round Ros and the two girls and we started to pray. And I was praying, Lord, out loud. You see, you can sometimes pray things out loud that you're not praying inside. So I said, Lord, if you want the cat to be healed or to be repaired, Lord, you'll have to provide the money. And I'll be honest with you, I thought in a few minutes I'll ring the vet. Well, we waited for a while, and then a young man in my church, we hadn't told anybody, but probably an hour later, a young man in my church walked down our driveway, and he put an envelope through the door. Now remember this, we only trusted God for our finance, we didn't ask anybody else. He put an envelope through our door, and he walked away, and I said, oh, Steve has just been to the door. And Ros went to the door and there was an envelope on the mat and we opened it. And guess what was in it? 60 pounds. Now, God's man of faith was thinking, oh, I could use that 60 pounds for lots of other things, but not the cat. But then God said, I provided it for the cat. And so the cat was brought home and was saved. Who was involved in that? Well, first of all, God was. That young man was, because I asked him, why did you do that? He said, I don't know. I was working. He was a surveyor. I was working out in the field, and God said to me, I want you to go to the bank, get £60 in the bank, take it to Alan's house, and put it through the door, because they need it now. And so off he went, brought the money, and he had no idea what it was for. That's the provision of God. And let me tell you, you don't have to be special. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be this, that, or the other. God says in the word, I will provide your needs. So faith is substance. Whenever we look at something in faith, we receive in faith the substance of what we're believing for. It's the evidence. Sometimes it's the only evidence 
that we have of things which are not seen. Now, I've said to the young people, the children, I put 10 pounds in their hands. Well, that's God, not me. Okay, he's put 10 pounds in you, and you've got it there, haven't you? Now, faith is substance. So you look at the substance, and you can't see 10 pounds, but in faith, you see it, and you receive it. So faith is a substance. It's all the evidence that you need. So at this moment, you're starting to plan what you're going to do with 10 pounds that I've got in my back pocket, okay? And that's the way that faith works. Faith doesn't work when we have a total understanding, oh, I can go and send a letter to a rich friend and say, look, I have a need of. Let me tell you another story. I'm sorry if these stories, are they okay to tell you these stories? Because they're just, you know, things that have happened. And I've got hundreds of them. I was in America preaching, and a millionaire said to me, Brother Alan, he was a pastor and a millionaire because he used to sell property. He said, Brother Alan, what needs do you have? And I felt God tug the back of my coat saying, you can't tell him. So I said to him, Brother Ken, I'm sorry, but when I came out full time, God said to me, I must Father, never in the name tell of Jesus, people we thank you because this week is yes. He said, well, I won't tell anybody else. this is a week else. where the promises of God And I God said, well, it wouldn't matter if he told lives. the world. I this can't tell you. He and he had his checkbook and a pen this in his hand. What are your needs? Now, did I have this needs? Yes, I had needs. But God and said you're not to share your needs with others, only with me. Separated and so when I said to dear Ken, who was a great brother, we lovely brother, and I told him, keep I told everyone tell you in Ken, good health. Give us directions. <laughs> and every but time we speak, you wake up, I help us to hear your voice anything. clearly. If he had given me a check for a hundred thousand dollars, which he and could have done and not felt it. I would Keep not have nation. been more blessed than I was when he put his checkbook Jesus. back Thank in his pocket because I was we in obedience to God. In and it's Jesus strange, isn't it, that obedience to God costs us something. It costs me a gift. Did I miss out anything? No, not at all, because Be God provides now, now my needs. So what does it say? It goes back here, it says, faith is the evidence of things not seen. Then down to verse 6, it says this, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, there's two things about faith. There is the faith, the things that we believe, and there is faith where we move with God knowing that he is our provider and all of those things. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And there are many people today, and I listen to them, through this last two years of COVID, moaning and groaning and, oh, isn't it, you know, terrible and, uh, and we've had to stay at home. Let me tell you something. God has been in control. When you had to stay at home, if you've had to wear a mask, whatever you've had to do, God is in control. And so here he says, with our faith it's impossible to please him, those that come to God must believe that he is God and that reward those that diligently seek him. Right, you can read this for yourself. One after the other, God mentions people. Some of them have been mentioned this morning. By faith, Noah, it says. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah, etc., etc., etc. By faith, they lived by faith. But let me tell you something, none of them were perfect. They had their doubts. <coughs> when Sarah... And I can understand this. She was a pretty old woman. But when Sarah was told you're going to have a baby, <laughs> she laughed. Well, wouldn't you? You probably would if you were as old as Sarah. You'd laugh. And probably Aladipo would think, oh, good, no more children. I don't know. You know. But there she was. She laughed. But God did not stop doing what he promised to do. All of these people. See, Abraham, what do you think about him? Here he is. He's, he's been told that his wife Sarah's going to have a kid, and what does he do? He then lays, at Sarah's insistence, with her maid and had a child, not through Sarah, but through a maid. It wasn't God's will at the beginning. God blessed 
that baby, but it wasn't God's will. He jumped the gun. He did what God hadn't asked him to do. It's a bit like saying to a ladipo, I want you to move to Chatham. And he says, well, I prefer Birmingham <laughs> or Manchester. No, no, no. You go where God sends you to go. You do what God sends you to do. And then there's so many others in this reading. You have a look at their names and then you examine the fact that they were all people of faith. Abraham, when he had his son, was told, go and, and sacrifice him. You know, sometimes God asks us to sacrifice the very thing that we've been believing for. Give it up to God. Sacrifice it. Why did he do it so willingly? Because God had promised him he'd be a father of many nations. And so he knew, and it says it here, he knew that if his son was sacrificed, he would bring him back to life again. How do I know that? Well, he said to his servant when he was going up the mountain, and his servant said to him, uh, you know, you, you haven't got a sacrifice. He said, well, you wait here and I'll go up with my son and we will return. He knew he would return. He knew that God would give life to his son. He followed the Lord. He trusted God all the way through. And then there are so many other people that I can't go on. I want to just mention, though, one person. There was a guy called Joseph. He was a bit like a ladipo. He had a dream, had more than one dream, and God told him in the dream what he was going to do. I want you to notice something. It would be easy to think that here he is dreaming one day, and the next day he's in charge of Egypt. <laughs> it took years for the dream that Joseph had to come to pass. I had a dream many years ago. And the dream was that I would see a church growing and moving in God. You know, some of the people that are in my church are now pastoring other churches. They've moved into other situations. Some of them I don't even know where they are anymore because we're not in contact. But I had a dream. And my dream came to pass. Somebody in the meeting had a picture of an aircraft hangar. Do you get, ever get visions? I don't call them pictures, I call them visions, because that's what the Bible says they are. And they had a vision of an aircraft hangar, and they said, God is saying that I'm going to bring people in, but I'm going to send them out. And somewhere, that's what God is going to do here, bring people in and send them out. They won't be here necessarily forever, but God will send them out, because you have a dream. So, here we go. Let's try and bring this together. Joseph held on to his dream. And I want you to think about this for a moment. There's Joseph stuck in a stinking prison. These prisons were not, you know, like prisons we have today with coloured televisions, three meals a day and all of that. <laughs> it weren't like that. And there he was stuck in the prison and he shares with someone and tells them, or two people, uh, the dreams that they shared with him. And instead of them getting him out of, or one of them getting him out of prison, they just left him there. They forgot him. I tell you something, you're going to find disappointments. Sometimes people will forget. There are people that I've helped for years, and they don't even send me a Christmas card. And in England, whew, if you don't get a Christmas card, or at least a message on Facebook, then you know you've been forgotten. But the fact is, God joins you to the right kind of people. And so you can read all about these people by faith. I suggest that you read it yourself. Because, and I'm glad Aladipo said this, we're a continuation of what they were. You know, there's nothing new. We're a continuation. The ministry didn't stop with the Old Testament, and a new ministry start with the New Testament. No, the ministry continued. There were 300 years of silence, but the ministry was continuing while God was doing what he was doing. And then the day of Pentecost came, and the power of the Holy Spirit fell. I talked to some people, and you think that the power of the Holy Spirit has never been seen before. It's in this modern generation, we are full of power. 
But let me tell you something. On the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. When was the last time you left church and people saw you and thought you were drunk? So what I'm saying is this. We need to get totally involved with God. Now, let me just finish in a moment because I want to pray. I should be finished already. You didn't do that. You should have done it. So I'm going to pray. But before I pray, I want to say to the children, because I love the children. I've always loved children. Let me start. Who's the oldest? So what are you going to do with your 10 pounds? Do you know? He doesn't know. I'll come back to you. What are you he was the youngest, aren't you? So what are you going to do with your 10 pounds? Sweets, ice cream, a toy. What are you going to do? A woman always knows what she's going to do. What are you? You want to buy books. Okay. There's the ten pound that you were believing for. See, you had to you had to receive that, so you were already buying books. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand that? What are you going to do? Well, while you're making up your mind, you look after that, okay? You don't get money given away in church very often, by the way, but God told me to do this this morning as an illustration. Have you found out what you're going to do yet? What are you going to do? Chocolate. Don't forget to give your mum and dad a bit. Okay. So let me just say why I did that. Because it's an illustration that we need to realize that when God promises something, we receive it by faith. We don't, we don't push God to do stuff he doesn't want to do. We receive what God is saying to us. That's why we need to listen to what the Lord is saying. Now, okay, I've been just kind of speaking out of my heart because it's the first time I've been here. I could tell you so many stories, but I'm going to finish up with one story that I know I've told Aladipo before. When I was leaving my church, although I didn't have a salary in all those years, and therefore I didn't have a pension, when I was leaving, I said to the Lord, Lord, how do I know that you're going to continue to provide our needs? Because we still have a house to keep and all those things. And I said to the Lord, and it's funny that I gave £10 this morning, I said to the Lord, Lord, £10 will prove that you're going to still look after us when I finish at New Life. Because I knew that they would not support me. Some of them did support me, but I knew they wouldn't because the new pastor was coming in and was going to get a salary. And so I was preaching, and after I preached, I sat down, and then we stood up to sing. And a final song. I didn't have to lead. That We had a group to lead. And I stood up to sing. And then I sat down again, f finished the service. And I stood up. I picked up my Bible and my phone. And there on my seat was a £10 note. I don't know how it got there. It wasn't there when I sat down. It wasn't there when I stood up. But when I sat down the second time and stood up, there was a £10 note. And that was eight, nine years years ago and I have to tell you God has provided miraculously for us in all that time so what am I saying to this church see the invisible believe the incredible and God will do it I want you got to work that machine or can you leave it when you come to the front with your dear wife we're going to just pray for them and I'm going to then pray for the whole congregation. Okay. By doing this, I'm not putting myself in a place, you know, above them. I'm putting myself in a place below them. You know, this guy doesn't always call me Alan. He calls me Sir. Well, I'm not a Sir. I'm an Alan. And sometimes sisters like you, they curtsy to me. But you don't have to because we're on the same level. I know that in your culture, that's what you're doing. That's fine. I accept that. But God is going to bless you too. Amen. He's going to bless you Amen. because your hearts are towards what God wants. Amen. You're not doing this for publicity or for power 
or for glory. The only glory that you're doing it for is for the glory of God. So he takes the simplicity, and don't take that as an offense, the simplicity of your hearts. He takes the simplicity of your hearts, and he begins to cause that to grow into something that is glorifying to God. Father, as my, I lay my hands on my brother and sister in Jesus' name, I pray that you will continue, Lord, to bless them. Father, thank you for all that they have begun here. Lord, thank you for their faithfulness. Lord, I know what faithfulness is when you're not faced with a great congregation of people and others can look and see that there's such a small thing. But Lord, thank you that you never, never look at a small thing and see it as small. You look at a small thing and see the growth that you're going to bring about. So we don't despise the small things. We glorify you in what we're doing. Father, will you bless them both and their children? Lord, fill them and fill them and fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want you all to stand, those that can anyway. The children may not. And I want to just bless you. This blessing is the blessing you know that. brother just this God I don't know some of you may have been born here I don't know where where you were born I presume most of you are from Nigeria you're from Nigeria aren't you Nigeria 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 okay let me I want to tell you something not too many English people will tell you this but I'll tell you this God brought you here because this country sent out missionaries he's heard me say it before God sent out missionaries to Africa and they received the message. When you came over to England, you probably looked around and thought, where is God in this place? Because so many of these people are unbelievers, and they don't want God. They don't look to God. And so God has sent you here. And I'm glad that Brother Oladipo said what he said when he said, you know, we're all in the ministry together. That's how our church started. Everybody was in the ministry together. They could share. Our young people would get up and share. So, folks, God has brought you here. And he's brought you here to bless this nation. If anybody, and I'm going to say it in good old English, if anybody spits in your eye, <laughs> just wipe it away and praise God because you're here for a purpose. I say that, spits in your eye, because sometimes people are cruel and they're rude and what have you. But I tell you, I am just so blessed with you people that God has brought over here and I know it's in the plan of God. So thank you for coming and you can have your time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just pray in the Holy Ghost for a few seconds and just respond to those inspirations. Hallelujah. Men dosike fre kupa la dan brand dosike posi kapa le gudu bagabasa kafa poko tu pekete prakus palaya. Lord, we assimilate, we assimilate, we assimilate, we assimilate, we assimilate by the power of the Spirit. We assimilate, we assimilate, we assimilate in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare and declare that what you said to us is what we shall experience. We speak strength, we speak power, we speak energy. We move into a new direction and dimensions of faith 
by the help of the Spirit, we receive encouragement that comes from the throne of heaven in the name of Jesus. And we declare and declare that our faith will stand. It will stand tall. It will stand tall in the name of Jesus. We are influencers. We are influencers because opportunity rises, arises to increase our influence and penetration in the name of Jesus. Right? Sike balada, mendo sike brando sike bagando sha, jeko bagada, mendo loga, beko paloza, ega baya kapolo sike prandoza, menga bayego broti kapala. We trust you, Father. For you will make it easy, you will make it possible, you will expand us, you will enlarge us, you will increase us on our side. You will open our eyes to see what you're doing. You will give us energy and strength to do it. We shall not be small, we shall not be little. We will break forth on every side, we will grow on every side, we will increase on every side. Our voice shall be clear. Our voice shall be heard. This nation will respond to the counsel of your spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command open doors to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. We command increase in energy, increase in favor, increase in funds, increase in resources, increase in men and women. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare the will of God shall be established through our hands. Answer to our ministry, to the assignment. Pharaoh shall come down. The people shall be saved. In the name of Jesus. Right? In the name of Jesus. Right? Oh, we thank you. For resources, we thank you. For faith, we thank you. We give you praise. We exalt and we magnify you. We give you all the glory forevermore. Thank you, most precious Father. Lord, we thank you for your servant. Thank you for the way you have helped him. We thank you for his entire life, for his journey. He's a man that has a track record with you. And he has evidences, even before men, to show that he has worked with you by faith. And Lord, we thank you for the way you have sustained him and the energy you've given to him and his family and the years ahead of him. Thank you because of the much more people you will still use him to bless. And thank you for the way you will see miraculously supply his needs. We are grateful for strength. We are grateful for health. We give you praise, Father, for using him as an example to many of us. We give you all the praise, Father, in Jesus precious name we pray Amen. hallelujah Amen. praise god i'm blessed i'm refreshed please let's have a seat thank you jesus we give you praise lord hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah we want to give to god please drop it if you're giving online what can the taste are available for you thank you so much we really really appreciate that hallelujah Hallelujah. Where we are today is as a result of faith. If God has not given us faith, we would have backed out. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we are always grateful to God for, for being there for us. Hallelujah. And we pray in the name of Jesus, our faith will not go down or reduce in Jesus' name. Every new thing God wants to do in the life of a man, he first of all sends faith to them before becoming manifestation. And we believe that there is a greater days, greater years, better blessings, bigger blessings for us, even as a people, in Jesus' name. We are not meant to be small. No, no, we're global influencers. It doesn't make sense, but it makes fit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank everybody for joining Praise God. And um, I want to specifically thank those of us who have been taking serious time to pray. Or oh, serious time to pray. And uh, for nearby bio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the one that has the anointing for the season. You know, when I look at some of the prayers we put on, one of the things about prayers is that it doesn't waste. Look. <laughs> <laughs> I came out from one bush, one village, somewhere in Nigeria. 
that I became born again from that place we are. Even if God does not do anything for me again, which is impossible, from where I came from to this place, uh, <laughs> God is free. And faith is genuine. Faith is genuine. Faith is genuine. I had a dream and a desire by faith that will be out of Africa when I don't even have a passport in Nigeria. As in, I've never even seen Lagos before in Nigeria before. I knew, when I, by faith, I knew that uh, God will want us to move out of, uh, out of the country. And it's very proper. And we're so grateful we got faith. Well, so I want to encourage us this week, we roll it again in prayers. My goal is that we get to a point that on a month, we would have pumped in about 60 hours of prayer. That's the goal. I've done the calculation. <laughs> it's there. Yeah, and don't forget, this is not a community church like that. This is not a, even this uh, discipleship church. This is a governmental church. So there's a lot we're doing here that's affecting the others because we're not covering this influence church. We're covering the environment. We, we are purifiers. Do you understand? We're atmospheric purifiers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're atmospheric purifiers. Even if the enemy wanted to do something against Medway this week, we have sorted it out in prayers. They won't know we are the one that did it, but we did it. So let's begin with prayers and let's continue till we devote ourselves to prayer and the ministration of the world. And when we keep doing that, we know definitely, you would not, will not, not only will God reward us, but we make us a principality in this society. Let me use that one. <laughs> Jesus, mighty name. God bless you. Appreciate Alan, thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you again. Everybody can preach faith, but not everybody has <laughs> lived a life of faith. <laughs> be a full time pastor for years without income. Oh, Lord. It must, it must be Jesus that sent you. Praise God. And I love that story because people online will hear this and they will understand the fact that. It's not only where we came from. Faith walks everywhere yeah. to the glory of his name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because this week is blessed. Amen. But this is a week where the promises of God will be fulfilled in our lives. Amen. This is a week where help us will rise. Amen. This is a week where the intention of God will be revealed to us. Amen. This is a week of manifestation. Amen. And everything, heaven has separated for our enjoyment and benefit and provision this week, we will experience it. Encourage everyone. Keep everyone in good health. Give us directions. And every time we sleep, we wake up, help us to hear your voice clearly. And do not allow the enemy to prevail over us. And this week, keep the body of Christ in unity. Keep the nation. Keep the nation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, most precious Father. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Let's share the grace together and fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. To the glory of his name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because this week is blessed. But this is a week where the promises of God will be fulfilled in our lives. This is a week where help us will rise. This is a week where the intention of God will be revealed to us. This is a week of manifestation. And everything heaven has separated for our enjoyment and benefit and provision this week, we will experience it. Encourage everyone. Keep everyone in good health. Give us directions. And every time we sleep, we wake up, help us to hear your voice clearly. And do not allow the enemy to prevail over us. And this week, keep the body of Christ in unity. Keep the nation. Keep the nation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, most precious Father. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Let's share the grace together and fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.